The Congo River is the most powerful river in Africa and the second largest in the world by discharge volume, second only to the Amazon, pouring an average of 42,000 cubic meters of water into the ocean every second. It is also the deepest river in the world, sinking 220 meters at certain points, and the ninth longest, stretching 4,700 kilometers across the Democratic Republic of Congo. Unsurprisingly, the river has enormous hydropower potential. It is estimated a total of 100 gigawatts of hydro capacity could be installed along the river. And of this potential, 40% comes from a single site. 220 kilometers southwest of Kinshasa, the DRC's capital and the second most populous city in Africa, lies a stunning natural feature. Over the course of 14 kilometers, the Congo River rapidly falls 96 meters in elevation, producing the world's single largest and most powerful rapid, Inga Falls. Every second, 40 gigajoules of mechanical energy pass through it, enough to power roughly 30 million American homes. The potential of this impressive feature has been recognized for decades. In the 1950s, Belgian colonizers realized the site's potential for hydropower, and in 1957, the Belgian cabinet approved construction of a series of power stations along the rapid. Still though, funding was an issue pushing back construction. Then on June 30th, 1960, Congo won its independence and the Belgian plans were dropped. However, the new Congolese government did not completely abandon the idea. And when Mobutu Sese Seko seized control over the country in 1965, he quickly advanced the plans. In 1968, construction started on Inga 1, a 351 megawatt hydroelectric power station just west of Inga Falls. Not long after its completion in 1972, construction commenced on Inga 2, a second phase 1.4 gigawatt station just one kilometer south of the first one. These two stations were landmark projects for the DRC, powering local population centers and the country's mining industry. Still though, they only harvested 4% of Inga Falls power. To harvest all of Inga Falls' immense hydroelectric potential, engineers have proposed an enormous project called the Grand Inga Dam. This project would involve the construction of a dam a few kilometers north of Inga Falls to reroute water into the Bundy River Valley. Several smaller dams would be built along this valley, trapping water in to form a roughly 40 square kilometer reservoir. At the southern end of this reservoir would be a lock for ships, along with an enormous 200 meter tall dam. Along this dam, a series of six hydroelectric power stations would funnel water through 52 turbines and back into the Congo River, generating a combined 40 gigawatts of power. This would make it the largest hydroelectric power station in the world, almost double the size of the current largest, the enormous Three Gorges Dam in China. The construction of this complex would be completed over the course of several phases. It would take over a decade to complete and would cost an estimated 80 billion US dollars. If built, the Grand Inga Dam would provide numerous benefits for the region. First of all, it would single-handedly double Africa's installed hydropower capacity from 38 to 78 gigawatts. And with an estimated generation cost of only 3 cents per kilowatt hour, the project would serve as a cheap source of green energy, fueling economic development and increasing the standard of living for people all across the Congo and neighboring countries. In addition, its construction would generate tens of thousands of new jobs, invigorating the national economy. Furthermore, the project, which would require international collaboration, would help promote peace and cooperation throughout the region. Lastly, the Grand Inga Dam would have a relatively small environmental impact. While its reservoir would flood a 40 square kilometer area and displace thousands of people, this is tiny relative to its power capacity. For comparison, to produce its 22.5 gigawatts of power, the Three Gorges Dam flooded over 630 square kilometers, displacing 1.3 million people. Grand Inga's small reservoir would mean flooding less forest area and displacing less people than similar projects. This, combined with its ability to provide millions of people with uninterrupted green energy, would make it a profound environmental success. Despite the Grand Inga Dam's potential to provide an immense amount of cheap green energy for Africa, it does come with its issues. First of all, $80 billion is an immense fee, especially for a country like the Congo. 
Collecting it would require loans from numerous international banks and organizations. In addition, with so much money being poured into one of the most corrupt nations in the world, it is feared that significant portions of money would be redirected into the pockets of politicians and other individuals with power. Most importantly though, the demand is not really there. The Congo's power grid is dreadfully small. While it has a population of over 90 million people, only one in five have access to electricity. And for the people that do, much of their demand is already accounted for by the 2.6 gigawatts of installed capacity, much of which is deteriorating and needs restoration. Inga 1 and 2, which have fallen into disrepair due to neglect, are not even operating at full capacity and are in need of rehabilitation. Right now, building a gigantic 40 gigawatt power plant would be completely unnecessary and would not fix any of the Congo's infrastructure or demand issues. In response to this, advocates have suggested exporting the excess energy to neighboring countries and potentially even Europe. However, this would require a regional power grid that just doesn't exist right now, and building it would cost billions of dollars more. Because of all this, currently, constructing the entire Grand Inga Dam complex is not very logical. Despite the Grand Inga Dam being impractical, a smaller project could make sense. In the early 2000s, an expansion to the current Inga 1 and 2 dams was proposed and discussed widely. Then, in 2014, the World Bank approved a $73 million grant for Inga 3, a third phase expansion to the existing dams that would consist of a hydropower station two kilometers east of Inga 2 that would generate 4.8 gigawatts. 2.5 of this would be exported to South Africa, 1.3 would be used for Congo's mining industry, and the rest would help provide power to 7 million people around Kinshasa. However, after disagreements with the Congolese government, in 2016, the World Bank suspended its funding for the project. Since then, Congo has tried working with numerous private companies to get the projects off the ground, including the Spanish ACS Group, the Australian mining company Fortescue, and Chinese developers. Still though, no permanent deals have been struck. Over the coming years though, as demand increases, it is very likely that an Inga 3 project will come to fruition. It, along with successive expansions, could be extremely beneficial for the region, serving as a source of green energy to power the African continent. And eventually, the larger Grand Inga Dam complex could be realized, harnessing the entirety of Inga Falls immense natural power. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe to Futurology for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.